Hi, I'm Ryan Custodio, a former elementary and middle school teacher. After years of teaching and learning, I've realized that learning doesn't just have to be in the classroom. So, I quit my job and left the United States to learn from others from all around the world, starting in South Korea. Welcome to my journey. Welcome to my classroom. Barbecue! Yes, the wonderful pastime of most Americans. From grill masters to grill watchers, you know, barbecue is not just limited to the U.S. alone. All over the world, people have been barbecuing all in their own unique ways. And for today, this will be our first Korean barbecue in Korea. Okay, I lied. I've had Korean barbecue before, but just not in Korea. Long flights create big appetites, and today we have a really big appetite for Korean barbecue. Amanda's gonna take me, herself of course, to eat some K barbecue as our first meal here. Let's go. All right. Well, if this is new to you, Korean barbecue here. Uh, I've actually haven't had this before. I assume this is the, what takes up all of the smoke from the barbecue. So I'm excited to see this in action. I've seen it in different YouTube videos. I've seen it from Korean Englishmen. Not myself, uh, I, I haven't. I don't know about you, Amanda, have you used this before? Oh, so this is something that is uh, familiar to her. I do not know what this is. It looks like a soup of sorts. We'll try it out. So I thought that these were the utensils and then I noticed it was really flimsy. It's a towel, uh, I think to wash your hands. But, uh, oh, anyway, where do we, do we have to ask for utensils? Do we forget them or? So, so Amanda just told me that the utensils are on the side. Look at this. It's like your own home kitchen right here with all the soup spoons and all the uh, chopsticks. Uh, oh, bottle opener. Look at that. No need to ask for extras if you drop any. This is awesome. So one thing I really love about Korean food, it's not just one giant plate that you get. Basically, you get a whole bunch of different plates, especially in Korean barbecue. And, oh, that's hot. I can feel the heat. Literally, when she was walking up, I felt the heat emanating from this. Wow, that's amazing. Hey, oh. Am I allowed to touch this? I will be honest with you, I am not the one that usually barbecues here. My wife does, she is the one that's in charge. So you're gonna see the camera flip here in a moment. And I need to kind of back up here as I'm getting a lot of heat emanating from here. Feels good on a nice 50 degree weather day. Let's give this a try. Mm. I didn't expect it to be cold, which is actually really refreshing because this is really hot right here. So there's a kind of interesting contrast between the two. Yum. Um, what's this? Ah, eggplant. Okay. Acorn, not eggplant, acorn. Sorry. Mmm. Oh yeah, I've had that before. It's really good. Let's make, we're both pretty starving, so let's get to eating. What is this wrapped in? Pickled radish. So this is pickled radish right here. Let's give it a try with the barbecue. Great first bite for being in Korea. It just slows down time. Every bite you take is an assortment of flavors, egging you on to savor every forkful. So 
Amanda told me that this is also a self-service bar where you can grab your own panchan, as it seems. So let me flip the video for you so you can see exactly what we can choose over here. You know, food is the great equalizer. Doesn't matter if you don't know the language. But once you taste the food that other countries have to offer, you're presented with this understanding of culture and camaraderie only food has the ability of showing you. So I was really thinking about the concept of Korean barbecue and why you have to cook it yourself. Because of course, in America, or most, at least what I've experienced when it comes to, with barbecue, you have the grill master, one person doing it for you, or if you go to a barbecue joint, they're cooking it all for you. Whereas here, it's almost, we're all in this together. So I don't really have the answer to why we are the ones cooking it, but my take on it is that it's kind of beautiful to see us working together, cooking it, flipping the food together, um, and eating together, making it almost uh, an experience versus uh, just sitting there and waiting to eat. So let's keep digging in. So um, this, I, I thought it was a jalapeno, but it is like a Korean pepper, I'm assuming, and uh, comes with is this gochujang sauce. So gochujang sauce, I might be butchering the way to say this, samjang sauce. So this is samjang sauce, and uh, I'm gonna dip a little bit of this and go right into it. This is a first for me. I've never done this before. Not crunchy. I'm a little nervous if it's gonna be spicy. It's spicy. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Then again, I like spicy, and then I start suffering later. It's already spicy. Oh. You know what's weird? I ate more and it cooled it down. Oh no, it didn't. It's really spicy. Okay, I'm eating my words. Can I get some water? It's really spicy. What are you doing? Hurry up. You're taking your time here. I'm doing it one-handed. Wait, is that water? That's tea. Cold tea. Cold tea, everyone. Cold tea for the spicy pepper. Oh yeah. I need to take this home. Let's just take this whole thing home. I'm gonna walk home pouring this. Pour it in my nostrils. Pour it in my eyeballs. Pour it on my head. It's really hot. It's so hot. It's so hot. I'm gonna admit I was a little cocky. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry mostly to my wife. I always try to act tough in front of her. I need more ice. It's not working. Spice it. It's all over my tongue. Like right here. It's good. I'm not complaining. I'm just complaining about the heat. Can I get some more of that cold tea? Probably why they don't have those in the American Korean barbecues that I've been to. As we know, most, most Americans can't handle at least that intensity of a spice. And I, I thought, I, I'm usually good at it. I'm usually pretty good at spice. So South Koreans take their food time very seriously. It's a time for bonding. Bonding with delicious food while you shut down your devices, turn off the TV, actually have a conversation with the person across from you. And it's a time where everyone can agree that whatever problems you had that day can be washed away with wonderful food. Pamse Mokso. That's the name of this place. That's what we just ate. Korean barbecue in Korea. 
first meal was a blast. My mouth is on fire and it doesn't help that I'm wearing this mask because it's kind of keeping all of the heat in here, but it was worth the experience. $20 for pretty much all of that food. You kidding me? That was amazing. Thank you. This is how I end it. I want to give my gratitude to the people that served us. I want to give my gratitude to the food that was given to us. Um, we have to be grateful these days because, you know, we don't have an opportunity to think about how we get all of these opportunities to eat great food, to be surrounded by great people. So again, don't forget to give that gratitude out because those people out there, yourself, we all need that. And it just feels good to give it and to receive it. So what I learned here is that food isn't meant to be eaten alone. It's meant to be enjoyed with friends and family, to bring people together, to have a grand old time to laugh, to joke with each other, to catch up with one another, to truly appreciate where your food comes from and to be so grateful for all the delicacies that this earth has provided for us. The next time you grab a meal, grab it with someone. Slow down time together and enjoy that moment with the food, the people you're with, and the memories you're creating. Trust me, you won't forget it.